Good afternoon, everyone. I'm delighted to address you through this recorded message for the opening of the panel, Choose Your Own Adventure, How to Manage the Many Forums on Space Sustainability. My thanks to the Secure World Foundation for their support and their leadership in convening this gathering, and I'm really sorry that I can't be with you in person in Tokyo. Enabling a coherent governance framework for space sustainability is our shared responsibility because space is a shared and limited resource. It is essential to safeguard outer space as a common asset for humanity and critically to advance on the achievement of these UN Sustainable Development Goals. We all agree that space sustainability is a priority issue that demands our immediate and concerted efforts. The real question, however, is how to achieve it effectively and coherently because of the diverse views and the diverse fora in which its different aspects are being discussed. On the one hand, discussions in multiple fora highlight a global recognition of the importance of this topic as well as its multifaceted nature. The orbits of the Earth are getting increasingly congested due to the accumulation of debris and the injection of new satellites at a scale that no one could anticipate. This combination has created many challenges. Radio frequency interference, to interference with astronomy, to collision risk and even disruption of the dark night sky and atmospheric ablation. These multiple facets of space sustainability confirm it as a complex issue that require the diverse competencies that reside in different fora. On the other hand, this complexity and involvement of multiple fora make it challenging for policymakers and the space community at large to navigate and optimize the activities in a holistic and coherent manner. UNUSA is the primary UN office for space matters, and it acts as secretariat to COPUS, the primary multilateral forum for space governance. It's our responsibility to facilitate a holistic approach to this topic, ensuring that COPUS receives appropriate inputs from experts and policymakers from related multilateral fora. To do so, we need to be realistic. While it's good to maintain momentum around the topic, we must guard against blindly calling for new legally binding regulation without proper consideration of what this actually means. We cannot ignore the geopolitics of our times. These tell us that new binding regulations are not a feasible option in the short term, regardless of the forum in which we may seek to develop them. What we can and must achieve, though, is consensus on what success and a sustainable future involving shared use of scarce and fragile space resources looks like, and a shared political will to make it happen. COPUS has paved the way to this result with the adoption of its long-term sustainability guidelines. But turning these voluntary guidelines into mandatory rules depends on member states. In other words, it depends on national implementation, and it is not through COPUS or any other multilateral body for that matter that that will happen. In recent years, member states have started to implement the LTS guidelines at national level, and this is key to making them legally binding on space operators. But that is not enough. Guided by the key principles of the Outer Space Treaty, there is an increasing recognition that we need to move beyond addressing just collision risk and also that we can't continue to look at the sustainability challenges that we face on a satellite by satellite basis. In a world with many tens or hundreds of thousands of satellites, the risk profile is created by the interaction of everything we launch into space. And managing those risks requires a complete and holistic approach to risk mitigation and remediation. That could mean, for example, using quantitative modeling to study the current path we're on and the consequences of it, particularly for developing countries, if we continue along that current path and maintain the status quo. I know that some member states are thinking along these lines, and as UNUSA, we want to make sure that the knowledge and the greater understanding that comes from these kind of studies is shared with a maximum of member states. At the same time, it's essential that we support and scale active debris removal solutions, and that we ensure a system of systems approach to space traffic management, convening the different providers of STM and SSA services. This will greatly contribute to enhancing space safety, which goes beyond Earth and includes lunar sustainability as well. These are all topics that are being discussed within COPUS, and member states are realizing that they need to create new mechanisms and leverage expertise and opportunities outside the formal COPUS setting to adequately work through the complex issues presented by each one. 
Accordingly, Member States and UNUSA as an office are making proposals to ensure that this happens in accordance with our respective mandates. Even if time is of the essence, the work still needs to be done to fully unpack the issues and achieve a shared understanding. And I would argue that debates and discussions at different events, at different meetings and in different fora, like this one for instance, all help advance our thinking on each one. UNUSA will continue to push for pragmatic, focused and efficient actions within the respective mandates of different organisations. And we will can facilitate communication and collaboration among various fora and organisations as needed. By doing so, we can ensure that as a global community, we complement each other's efforts, we avoid confusion and duplication, especially for member states, and that we amount to more than the sum of our individual parts as we strive together to achieve a coherent and unified approach to space sustainability. UNUSA is also called upon to think out of the box in engaging different export experts to inform the multilateral process, all while preserving the integrity of member state decision making. Many of you will have seen the step change in COPUS meetings, where delegates are increasingly being informed of issues and solutions by the private sector and other non-governmental experts. We will continue to create more such opportunities to inform decision makers by convening the right experts around the right questions through conferences and meetings convened under our new United Nations Space Bridge initiative. Furthermore, at the UN, we fundamentally believe that space sustainability is a global issue that affects all member states. As such, debate, discussion and decisions require the participation of a maximum of interested nations, irrespective of their spacefaring status or their degree of technical and socioeconomic development. As always, those who have the most to lose are in fact the most vulnerable in our society, mostly in developing countries. By ensuring that these countries have a voice in these discussions, UNUSA and COPUS are fostering a more equitable, effective and comprehensive approach to space governance. UNOSA is conscious of the fact that as the number of stakeholders and satellites increase, the complexity of space governance spirals proportionately. We therefore understand that our role becomes ever more crucial, as does that of COPUS, which is the platform for advancing these discussions. I would close by highlighting that space is at the forefront of discussions for heads of state at the Summit of the Future taking place in New York in September this year with space sustainability featuring as a priority topic to be addressed through the multilateral process led by COPUS. Moreover, as proposed by Under Secretary General Ryder at the recent UN Portugal conference on management and sustainability of outer space, it might be time to convene a space summit in 2027 to give a much needed jolt to more new initiatives and efforts to address the multiple challenges faced by humanity on Earth and in space. Going forward, I hope that you will follow UNUSA and COPUS's work closely. Space sustainability is a big challenge and big challenges require multiple partners, but we will gain nothing by stretching limited resources in different directions. We can instead achieve everything by linking the capabilities of different fora under a coordinated approach that can deliver the benefits of space for all humanity, present and future. Thank you for having me with you.